It's story time with Dr. C.I. All right, so I'm starting this new thing called Story Time with Dr. C.I., where every week I tell y'all a different story about what it's like to be a diversity, equity, and inclusion consultant. So y'all know I work in DEI, right? So a little while ago, I'm going to say, if I identify the time, then y'all might know who the company is. And because I'm often bound by confidentiality, I can't release the name of the company. But there's some information I, that I do talk about. So hypothetically, especially if they are my client. But I'm going to talk about lingual racism today. What is what is lingual discrimination or lingualism as it relates to, for example, racism? It's when you discriminate against somebody based on the kind of language that they use, right? So because of their language, you find a way to oppress them because they speak differently than you. It's called lingual discrimination or lingualism, however you wanna call it, or language profiling even. Interesting, right? So working in this company, for this company, I should say, because I'm a consultant, so I came in, and one of the things that we do in companies is we run assessments. Now, with the assessments, we, we look at all types of different things within companies for DEI. Now, this was early in my career when I was first starting DEI, and I said, the company said, we want you to come in and do a DEI audit. I said, cool, I'm going to come in and do this audit. Y'all, I didn't know what I was signing up for. So I get into this company, and one of the things that I have to do first is review their HR documents. So I'm like, all right, you know, so I'm looking at performance reviews, uh, the method that they uh, create performance evaluations, et cetera. And the lady says, there's this one manager who we want you to coach. I say, all right, you know, what's going on? She said, well, I'm gonna give you a stack of his reviews because that's gonna be your assessment because we want you to focus on him first. Older white male in an engineering department. I'm like, all right, what am I in store for? And he's a VP, y'all, uh, vice president. So he's, a, he's an executive. So I go through his performance evaluations that he has. His performance evaluations are excellent. His colleagues, his other executives who look like him, love him, right? He got 4.5 out of five on his performance e reviews on average. So then I tell the person that I'm working with in HR, let me see how his employees rate him. Because in their performance reviews, your employees can rate you and then you see the score. So I look at the score from his employees and it's like a 2.1 out of five. So I start reading into these performance reviews. Mind you, he manages a team of like 45 other engineers. Most of them who are, uh, for example, identify as Indian. And I don't mean Native American. I mean Indian as in people from India, for example. And there are people who are foreign and only about 20% of the team is actually American born and, and consider themselves American, right? So I'm reading through his performance reviews and how he's rating his team and how they're rating him. And there's this common sentence in the performance reviews. Y'all wanna know what it is? Anybody wanna take a guess? No, let me explain. So he says about his employees, uh, many of them needs to learn to speak better English. Y'all, in captions, needs to learn to speak better English. Highlight, highlight, highlight. Now on a team of 45 people in which 80% are foreign born or don't identify as American, guess how many times that phrase shows up in a performance review for a person who's been managing this department for seven years plus, that he says that to people. I counted 98 times where people reported that he said that to them or where he's even put it in a performance review on paper. Why does he still have a job? You wanna know why? Because this person says, I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to change. And in seven years, you ain't noticed that there was a problem with the way that you speak to your employees, right? So they're like, we want you to put this person in coaching. I'm not gonna go through this person's coaching plan. I said two things. Is this person willing to learn? They said, yes, no, he wasn't. And I found that out in our coaching session. He did it because he had to. It was like, I'm just here so I don't get fired, right? And his behavior never changed. And the people on his team, guess what did change though? The retention, the turnover. It was terrible every year. And that's why they called me. So you see, I'm gonna give y'all a lesson after each one of these stories. The lesson is, are you willing to change? If not, you got to go, right? Because all you do is you're going to spread harm to the people who don't deserve it. Imagine 
especially working for a tech company in which you have centers and things overseas, and you ask someone who does not have any kind of cultural inclusive intelligence, for example, to go manage a bunch of people and you don't prepare them with discrimination training or a coach or anything, and you wanna see how well it works out. Your retention is gonna suffer. Your turnover is gonna suffer. The human beings who deserve quality management are suffering. How dare companies go overseas and to other places and then say, we wanna teach you how to speak better English. You know what that is? That is a form of professional colonization, and it is a problem. You do not get to professionally colonize companies. You don't get to colonize and assimilate employees, especially when you go into their land. That's not how we wanna do things, but then again, that's how many countries who are in power do things. And it trickles into our workplaces and it is sickening and disgusting and it needs to stop. So the lesson here is professional colonization. It's wrong and we shouldn't do it. And this has been my story for today. Y'all stay tuned, I'ma drop one on y'all every Sunday.